hi everyone the topic we are going to study in this video is routing table so whenever we want to transmit a packet from source to destination so the network layer in tcp ip protocol in a network system plays the role that is it is first collecting the data and finding the route then forwarding a packet so how to find a route and forward a packet that is based on the entries in the routing table so there are two cases one is static entry another one is dynamic entry we are going to see one by one so this diagram is showing a router connected in a network so the primary duty of the network layer in tcp ip protocol is packetizing a data all the data is collected from the higher layers the network layer is collecting a data and packetizing data to transmit the data to the destination so as soon as the packetizing is done the next duty of the network layer is to find the route that is with the help of the router the route the path where how the packet is to travel is determined then the action after the path is found the route is found to transmit a packet then the action is forwarding a packet to the destination so here uh, this net internet network uh, device router is connecting several networks see this network n1 now has a group of devices connected together and this is another network connected uh, far away from the region so these two different networks want to communicate need to communicate each other so in order to connect a different network the internet network device the router is used in between the networks and the router is guiding a packet to move further and the second diagram is showing uh, different paths so the packet from the source may travel in any route the duty of router is to find the best route for the packet to forward to the destination and reduce the cost so when a host in a network say the system has a packet to transmit to the destination or a router received a packet to move further to the destination then the determine the primary work of the router is to determine and set the route of the data packet and when the best route is determined then the action is to forward a packet to the destination that is action to connect to the route once the path is determined so the packet from the source may travel in several route so the best route here that is traveling through the router r5 is the best route rather traveling through r1 and r2 or uh, traveling through r3 and r4 and reaching the destination so r5 is the best route so how does the router find a route when you, when it is receiving a packet to transmit further to the destination so the requirement here is either a host or the router must have a forwarding table say the routing table and this table contains all the information the information about the destination that is network address network mask and the interface through which path actually the packet is traveling so all informations are to be there in the forwarding table so the basic format of the routing table is shown below the field here this field mask network address next hop address and interface flags reference count and use these are the field should be there in the routing table and basically first four fields are mandatory when we want to forward a packet so the network address and mask both define uh, address of the network that is the name of the network and number of bits that are actually used to represent a network and next next hop address next hop address means we can see the path between a router to another router the trip taken by the packet to travel from a router to another router and the interface the router may have several interface when it is connected to several networks once the path is found then which interface is actually used to transmit a packet and then flags so in flags we have uh, five different flags u means up up flag and g gateway and h host specific and d and m flags are representing the addition and modification of the informations then the reference count field is giving number of users accessing the route at the moment and the final field use says that number of packet transmitted through the router to particular destination so these are the fields should be there in the routing table and when a packet is reaching the router a router will look after all the entries that is the network address and when the network address destination address is determined the corresponding interface is used to forward a packet so basically the entries in the routing table are done in two way 
one is static entry and another one is dynamic entry so the static routing table means that all the entries are done manually by the administrator whenever the network is made all the informations about the network the destination are entered manually but dynamic means automatic entries are done whenever there is a change in the network and the automatic entries are done by the help of uh, protocols so set of protocols are being used to make the entry if there is any changes or if there is any failure in the network connections and because the static is manual entry it does not use any protocol so whenever there is a change in the network and if if there is any breakage or failure or link breaks then the user has to wait until the manual entry is to be done but unlike uh, static the routing protocol used in the dynamic uh, routing table will immediately make another link another path information as soon as the network changes or is there any link uh, breakages and the routing protocols used in a dynamic routing table are rip that is routing information protocol and ospf open shortest path first and bgp border gateway protocol and igrp interior gateway protocol then eigrp that is enhanced interior gateway routing protocol so these are the different protocols uh, that can be implemented in dynamic routing table entry based on the network systems and the requirement so basically static routing means there is a one way communication and no protocols used let's say the router used here is a static that is the entries are done manually and if this router fails during the communication during the transmission of a packet from this source to this destination and because it is one way communication and when it gets failed the user has to wait until the administrator finds the path and make entries in another router so it is a time consuming process and it is not effective for larger network so dynamic routing because the network information in the routing table are done automatically using the protocols and whenever the router gets failed so let's say uh, this router the entry in this router is uh, based on dynamic uh, table and uh, when, during the communication if this link is failed if there is any issues in this link then the protocol used in this router will automatically find alternative path and will make the entry immediately the entries are done very quickly so it increases the speed and this can be implemented in wide area network so for inter network to connect multiple networks we have to use dynamic routing table so this table is giving the basic differences between the static routing and dynamic routing so in static routing entries are done manually and in case of dynamic routing the protocol used are making the automatic entry so no protocol used here we use different protocols say rip ospf bgp and igrp and all and static can be used for a small networks but for inter networks wide area connection we need to go with the dynamic routing protocol and because of manual entry the static routing is secured one and automatic entry sometimes leads to less security so the routing table is the mandatory thing in a network that is actually determining the path for the packet to forward further and to move it to the destination and basically two types of uh, routing table entry that is static and dynamic and when we go for wide area network uh, we must use dynamic routing table because of the automatic uh, entry of the network information by the protocol used in dynamic case thank you